So here's the question. In the print and packaging supply chain, how do we deliver new ideas and innovative practices to continually improve your profit, your brand, and your quality? Welcome to the Gamut Podcast, and I am your host, Jeff Collins, Director of Print Technologies for ID Alliance. We are a nonprofit global think tank serving the graphic communications industry with 12 offices strategically located around the world to better support our membership. You can support the Gamut Podcast and content like this by becoming a member at ID Alliance by going to www.idalliance.org. I'd like to thank our sponsor, Canon USA. They provide industry-leading production and large-format printing solutions supported by exceptional professional service offerings. With the technology offerings of the Canon and OSE brands and a vast portfolio of toner-based and inkjet solutions, Canon USA helps companies of all sizes to find ways to improve sustainability, increase efficiency and control costs in conjunction with high volume, continuous feed, digital and traditional printing and workflow solutions. Canon USA is headquartered in Melville, New York and has sales and service locations across the United States and throughout the world. On today's Gamut podcast, we have a special guest, Ian Pike. Ian is the manager of partner business development at x Right Pantone, who offers a full range of solutions used by manufacturers, retailers, printers, photographers, filmmakers, and graphic design houses to achieve precise management and communication of color and appearance throughout their processes. x Right Pantone products and services are recognized standards in the printing, packaging, photography, graphic design, filmmaking, automotive, what else do they do? Paints, plastics, textiles, and even medical industries. Hey, Ian, this is Jeff, and I just wanted to start by saying thank you for spending time with us today and joining us on the Gamut Podcast as well. I'd like to thank your company, x Right Pantone, for making this happen. Of course. Great to be here. So to begin, why don't we start with your background, a little history about yourself and how you came into your current role at x Right Pantone. Yeah, so we, yeah, yeah I worked for x Right um, starting in 1989, and then I went, to, uh, moved down to Charlotte here and worked at Sun Chemical from 2006 to 2011. And the technology that uh, team that I was running here um, developed a cloud-based color um color repository called smart color mm -hmm. and we basically sold the rights for that uh back to x right and pantone which turned into something called pantone live um that we launched in 2013 so in 2011 i went back to x x right um from sun i stayed here in charlotte which is where i was uh i was posted with with sun and uh, and I managed the uh, the Pantone Live initiative until about 2015, and then I became the portfolio manager for the uh, packaging initiative at x Right, which I worked on until three years ago. And since then, I've been working for the um, the managing director of Pantone, a guy named Adrian Fernandez. Yeah. And so Adrian um, runs Pantone, and I'm managing the licensing business for Pantone. So we've got about 250-plus licensees that all make use of the Pantone system, either the libraries or the data or – um, the assignment of Pantone identities to materials, uh, whether it be ink or vinyl or thread or uh, paint, you name it, um, mm -hmm. software, hardware, all the different hardware output devices, everyone from Epson to Canon to HP, you name it. Um, all of these guys make use of Pantone in one way or another. And so I'm basically managing that that business at Pantone these days. And today we're going to discuss a hot topic for brand owners, designers, and print and packaging suppliers, and that's maintaining updated Pantone color libraries in Adobe Creative Cloud to ensure that everybody in the supply chain for print and packaging are on the same page. Just 
I think that's right on uh, right on the mark, and it is a hot topic. Uh, like like you mentioned, we've got you know many users around the world, uh, you know, in the design function and pre media, uh, you know, at d different converting and printing establishments, all making use of the Adobe tool set and. Uh, and for sure, uh, the, having the right Pantone color libraries available in the Adobe Creative Cloud is is one of the things we hear about uh, pretty frequently. So in keeping the Pantone color libraries properly updated and current and in sync with the supply chain from brand owners, creatives, designers throughout uh, pre-press and pre-media has always been a hot topic, as I mentioned before, in a leading practice meaning that uh, we need to keep those current and stay on top of those libraries. And with whether it's with pre-flight software or something like that, can you give our listeners a little background and history on updating Pantone color libraries? What does that look like? And what's the current state? And what's there for us in the future? Yeah, sure. Well, yeah, as you know, Pantone likes to stay current with color trends. And, you know, as a result, we're regularly augmenting the various Pantone publications with new colors. Um, that way, the, the palette of Pantone colors stays fresh and relevant for all of our you know, users, various design projects. So whenever Pantone prepares to add these new colors, we basically reach out to our partners in their creative industry in advance so that their design and production software can, you know, incorporate the new colors by the time Pantone publicly announces the launch. So we try and time that so everyone's got news about, you know, these new Pantone colors at the same time. But with the Adobe Creative Cloud, you know, the last update to the Pantone Pantone color libraries was was about five years ago, and as a result, the Adobe applications are unfortunately missing you know, hundreds of the of the PMS colors that we've added since 2012 because right. Adobe hasn't updated those applications yet to support you know the expansion of the of the Pantone palettes. So you're so, talking about uh, Adobe incorporating the newer libraries in a you know a new release essentially. Um, so if they were to release a new version or an update of uh, of Creative Suite, would they contain those new libraries, or is that something that you would have to uh, go to Pantone and uh, get to add in? Yeah, no, that's a great question, and we get that all the time. You know, we know that it's you know it's challenging um, not having those updated Pantone colors in the Adobe solutions. So we've got a couple of ways that uh, we want to help kind of overcome this, you know, this disconnect. Uh -huh. and, and, and what are some of those ways? Well, I mean, currently, um, one way that users can keep their Pantone libraries up to date in, in various design applications, including the Adobe products, is by using the Pantone Color Manager software. So this is a utility. We've had it available for quite some time. It uh, runs on Windows and Mac platforms. And what it does is accesses the latest Pantone colors from a central cloud server. Mm -hmm. And then it directly exports them into the design software uh, that's installed on your computer. So this is uh, including the Adobe Creative Cloud core apps, so Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign, uh, and also um, you know Corel Painter and Quark Express. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Users can get that from Pantone.com. Uh, it's ninety nine dollars, uh, but it's available for free if uh, users purchase really any of the Pantone guides or or chip books. If I was to use that uh, utility, is it a manual process to update those libraries? Do I have to, one, you know, maybe save them out in the right format for, let's say, Photoshop, and then import them? Or does that happen automatically? 
Yeah, it's a it's a direct export feature from the software. Uh, and if the software is installed uh, and detected as being installed on your computer, then basically the, the, that option is uh, available to click on. And it exports it, puts it in the right location, so it keeps the, you know, the friction uh, pretty low um, with each of the applications that's supported. Now, we're in you know, the graphic arts uh, uh, community, industry, packaging, and printing, and so there's always the considerations in pre or pre-press when we accept files uh, that contain Pantone libraries. And let's just say a scenario like this, a designer has used a more current version or even a, uh, you know, maybe an older version. Yeah, no, exactly. Uh, many of the Pantone colors have been, you know, in existence for quite a while. It's just those newer, uh, you know, additions that Pantone makes to stay current. Uh, you know, those, those would be the ones that, you know, that are missing. And that's the frustration point um, with, you know, with some of our users is they can't find these newer colors, the trendy colors in some cases or or those that have been added uh you know during one of the the expansions of our palette over the past years and what else is interesting about uh, the utility uh, pantone manager for keeping things updated and synced yeah, I mentioned the Pantone Color Manager, um, which uh, you know, which folks can get for free if they've got um, you know one of our publications. They can find the registration uh, code on the uh, the full color page that's at the front of the Pantone guide, um, and then they can go right to our website and download the Pantone Color Manager software. But you know, another relatively simple and easy and, and free way to look up uh, any Pantone color, um, including those that might be missing from uh, the Adobe apps, is by using the Pantone Color Finder. Mm -hmm. And you'll find this on Pantone.com slash Color Finder. Right. And it's a web uh, a web resource that lets you search for any Pantone color, you know, by number or by name uh, for for our fashion and home colors we have names with each of the Pantone identities or you can access um, or convert from uh, hex uh, hexadecimal or HTML code uh, or RGB values uh, and and find uh, a Pantone color that matches uh, you right. can create a swatch in your Adobe app then based on the RGB or hex values uh, and copy and paste the official Pantone you know, color ID to name the swatch um, and then make that part of your document. So you could color up elements in, a, in an Adobe Illustrator file, for instance. And any Pantone color is based on a spectral curve, right? So, right. you know, there we have 31 reflectance values, you know, as measured with, uh, you know, one or another geometry of, of measurement instrument. But, um, you know, simple. So that's the DNA of, a, of the color. And uh, a more simple way to extract the color values would be to boil that spectral curve down into something like C-Lab using one of the, you know, CS, CIE functions um, to, uh, to arrive uh, at the C-Lab values. But practically speaking, um, folks like to refer to many of the colors they design in with just the RGB values, uh, the red, green, blue values, um, most usually – uh, based on sRGB space, which is the kind of original RGB color space that has existed. There are a few other RGB color spaces, um, right. and, uh, and, and that becomes a shorthand. Uh, the, the key is that the Pantone name or number uh, is, is a great identifier. It, it carries uh, you know, the weight of that full spectral curve uh, as some metadata that's associated with yes. each Pantone color. But the RGB is a good shorthand that lets you represent, you know, a semblance of the color in, in one of these applications. We talked about the hex code. That's just the RGB, but translated into, into hexadecimal. So you take the R um, and you put it 
it in hexadecimal and they take the G value and put it in hexadecimal and then the B value and then you string all those together and you wind up with the with the hex code, um, otherwise known as the HTML code right. um, because you can encode that into a web page um, or other uh, other document and it will appear as the as the RGB values that you entered. And this really helps the uh, brand owner and the designer, correct me if I'm wrong, to synchronize that Pantone uh, color for their design for their design across print, um, web, uh, mobile. So we're you know syncing the the uh, I guess you would say the digital shelf with the packaging shelf that you would physically see in the store. Yeah, there are a lot of ways to convert from uh, a color identity, a spectral curve, for instance, into RGB or into a CMYK equivalent. So you, you know, users might often find that the RGB values or CMYK values that come from various sources don't uh, always align or agree. Uh, so that's why you know we recommend – uh, maintaining the Pantone name or identity so that uh, a user ha who has access to the full spectral data can get to the kind of root level of, of what each Pantone color is all about and then you know, make any calculations that are required from from there. But for sure, users will see, you know, situations where different profiles might be applied, um, where different technology is used, different sorts of calculations are made based on the measurement conditions. And, uh, and that's why that, you know, the Pantone color system is so is so helpful is because you can simply call out the color by name or by number. And then you have a, a really um, clear way to describe the design intent and also a, a clear approach to realize that design intent when it comes to you know, reproduction, whether that's on the web uh, and digital content, you know, in an ink recipe or you know, in a printed uh, package or publication. Understood. And I wanted to talk to you about a unique solution uh, called Adobe Color. Many of our listeners in the Idea Alliance community that are on the pr production or manufacturing side may not be aware of what Adobe Color is. And uh, there's uh, you know, now support for Pantone libraries in Adobe Color. So can you tell me more about Adobe Color and the integration of Pantone libraries for that design application? Yeah, sure. We'd be happy to. Um, Adobe Color is uh, is a widely used web-based uh, color theme creator, uh, and you can find it at color.adobe.com. And uh, this used to be the uh, what Adobe called Cooler, spelled K-U-L-E-R, and and now it's uh, Adobe Color. Mm -hmm. And under the My Themes uh, tab of the page header, if you have saved some themes, uh, you can find uh, functionality um, to do, well, uh, quite a few different things, but, um, but one of the new features is support for up-to-date Pantone color libraries. So right, this I'm means you can convert mm -hmm. uh, the colors uh, within it and within any of the pre-saved Adobe color themes that you have into their closest matching Pantone colors, whether those are based on, you know, color harmony or based on uh, images uh, and the extraction of color using uh, the Adobe Capture functionality, or if the if the theme is just simply assembled of you know, someone's own creative vision. Can you tell me about any new solutions that would make it easier for our Pantone users? Yeah, right on. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the idea here, Jeff, is that the Adobe Color Toolset is actually making use of some new technology from Pantone. It's called the Pantone API. Right. Uh, API is short for Application Programming Interface. This is a, a helper um, application that um, can be embedded in into another software in order to perform a task. And this Pantone API API provides uh, access to the latest Pantone color data in, in, you know, within a Pantone licensed software. And this 
kind of streamlines the ability to search for colors, to select colors, to convert colors to Pantone. And the the Pantone Color Finder that I mentioned earlier actually makes use of this Pantone API. Uh, we've got a, you know, a half dozen other third parties, including Adobe, um, with the Adobe Color implementation that are now working with this Pantone API. And we've got you know a few dozen more that will be starting over the balance of of this year. Um, and one of the other things we're doing with this you know with this API, this sort of hot wire into into a cloud of Pantone colors um, is we're developing a new uh, Pantone extension for the Adobe Creative Cloud and we'll you know we'll put this into the Adobe Exchange Marketplace and you know in the coming months once it's completed uh, the way the extension works is it, it'll allow users to browse and filter and find uh, and convert and apply uh, Pantone colors using a, like a common interface. Yeah. And si since the extension will work in Photoshop or Illustrator or InDesign, you know, users are going to have the same you know GUI uh, to access the Pantone color libraries. Uh, you know, no matter which of those apps they're they're in. So the idea is that'll make working with you know the Pantone colors not only complete because you know the most up to date versions of the Pantone colors will be served up, but it should make it faster and easier to you know, save your preferences and sort of move colors from this Pantone API and the and the extension that uh, that it's on top of and move those into the various Adobe apps. <laughs> Sounds like a easy to use Swiss Army knife for Pantone color libraries, and it's overdue, right? Uh, you know, yeah. folks have been frustrated by this, and so we're trying to do what we can to react to, you know, to the, you know, to the voice of customer um, that that we've heard at Pantone. Excellent, and we've covered quite a lot of ground here. And to kind of close out the discussion, uh, what does the future hold in terms of integration uh, into design software? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, we've been working on our, our roadmap uh, uh, and also a roadmap collectively with Adobe. And, uh, you know, the Adobe core apps themselves uh, will be expanded to also make use of this new Pantone API that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. So... Um, so that's forthcoming. We're going to add some new functionality to the Pantone Adobe extension that I mentioned. Uh, and this API um, will make its way into other software products that are used in, you know, in design inspiration and uh, in planning and communication. Uh, prototyping software. We're working with some some folks that are in publishing, uh, and even some of the manufacturing software that's out in the market. And I guess the idea is, in that way, all of the you know, software that the Ideal Alliance community and the and the Pantone users, you know, have on their on their PCs or or mobile devices, can stay updated as Pantone stays current with the color trends and and forecasting and you know in the market at large. Fantastic, Ian. That was great. And we're going to go ahead and close out the podcast. And I want to thank you and x Right Pantone for spending time with us today, sharing that critical knowledge on a hot topic of updating Pantone libraries, something that affects print and packaging suppliers and brand owners every day. Yeah, that's great, Jeff. Thanks so much for your time, and uh, we appreciate it. Thanks for listening to the Gamut Podcast. If you have ideas, suggestions, or would like to join us or even sponsor future podcasts, simply email me at jcollins at idealliance.org. That's J-C-O-L-L-I-N-S at idealliance.org. Take care and have a productive day. Yeah.